protecting their quarterback. And here we go from Minnesota with the Vikings to receive the opening kickoff. Low Miller puts it in the air, and Darren Nelson, the longtime Viking running back and kick returner, takes it back to the 21 yard line. The Minnesota Vikings with Sean Salisbury, who guided four seasons ago the Winnipeg Blue Bombers to the Grey Cup title in the Canadian Football League playing today the most meaningful game of his NFL career clearly Allen the running back Jones Carter and Carter the wideouts Chris Carter back from a broken collarbone Jordan the tight end and there is the fully ripened offensive line Zimmerman and McDaniel on the left side each going to the Pro Bowl from the 21 yard line they begin with Allen the tailback in the eye taking it out to the 24 yard line Brad Edwards the safety comes up to stop him it'll be second and seven and let's take a look at the redskin defense a base for three man buck johnson and the rookie shane collins the right end wilbur marshall having a great year going to the pro bowl govea in the middle andre collins the right linebacker aj johnson and martin mayu back off injured reserve are the corners copeland and edwards are the safeties again daryl green not even here with a bruised heel, the great cornerback. On second and seven, they give it to Allen again, and he probes the middle for a five-yard pickup. Terry out to the 29-yard line, and that'll set up a third and two. Al, you touched on something very important for the Washington Redskins. That is having Mayhew back, and particularly after losing Daryl Green, because also back, as you also touched on, a real fine wide receiver for the Vikings Chris Carter their leading receiver and he has missed four games with a broken collarbone and he is back ready to go and that could be an interesting matchup today third and two from the 29 yard line on the game's opening series and on an end around is Joe Johnson a former Redskin a play they like to run a lot normally with Anthony Carter and he is very close to a first down as he takes it out to the 31 yard line close enough for a measurement as Gordon McCarter today's referee calls for the change to be brought in the Vikings use a lot of reverses perhaps more than anyone in the National Football League as part of their running a game and as you can see Johnson diving and lunging and as you can hear for enough yardage to pick up the first down by about half an inch it was a good spot for the Vikings and you're right about their misdirection and that's true of everything they do Frank special teams and even on defense this is a team that is built on speed Jack Burns the man on the right the offensive coordinator the man on the left Tony Dungy their defensive coordinator every concept every attack is planned on being faster and quicker than their opponent first down from the 31 yard line they stay on the ground and this is very close to a first down a 10 yard gain or a little short of that as Brad Edwards comes up to make the stop well you had a good look at Terry Allen breaking to the outside one of the reasons they could let Herschel Walker go last year as part of the house cleaning here also on the way out was Keith Millard Joey Browner Wade Wilson as Dennis Green made a statement early on he just bangs into the seven hole over in the left side breaks it out to the outside good pickup You'll notice every one of the Redskin defensive linemen and linebackers had a purple jersey in his face. And that's what allowed Allen to bounce out of there. Nobody from the Washington side of the ball even was able to get a hand on him, much less bring him to the ground. And it's another Viking first down. Ten-yard pickup. Allen's carried three times for 18 yards. Salisbury has yet to throw a pass. First down at the 41-yard line. Salisbury having a tough time getting the plays in from the sidelines. He's walked over twice now to the sidelines. They hustle him back in. The play clock ticking down on him. Well, his his little heart's got to be going oh, right pitter-patter. I think it's right in his <laughs> chops, wouldn't you believe? Play clock is down to three at the snap. And again, they give it to Allen. A minimal gain. He takes it to the 43-yard line. It'll be second and eight. Jason Buck. In on the tackle three minutes into the game no score if the Vikings win the game they go to Dallas next week if Washington wins this game they go to San Francisco in the next round good luck if you're Washington right? 
They would love to make the trip. Second and eight. Minnesota at the 43 on the game's opening drive. And Salisbury's first pass is a bad one behind Chris Carter. And again, these two have had very little chance to hook up because since Salisbury earned the starting job, Carter's been on injured reserve. Exactly, out with that broken collarbone, but this is just a bad pass by Salisbury. Plenty of time to set up. Had a good block over on the left side from Gary Zimmerman. They were keeping Shane Collins low where he couldn't get his hands up, and he just threw a bad pass. Well, he, he sure acted like he expected Carter to break to the sidelines. And, uh, but at least he's got that first pass away, and it wasn't intercepted. Again, to reiterate, his first playoff exposure and such limited experience in the NFL to be in this position leading a division champion. On third and eight, off the play fade. Good protection. And he throws a strike for a first down to Chris Carter at the Redskin 43-yard line. Now, perhaps this is what the offense has lacked while Chris Carter's been out of it. He is a big playmaker for the Vikings. Has been ever since he came here. Buddy Ryan getting rid of him in Philadelphia. He turned into a major star here. This is not an easy ball to catch. It's thrown behind Carter. He spins around and covers it up as he goes down. That was a ball thrown behind Carter and a good catch. Boy, Mayhew had his hand right sure in did. front. That's the ball barely missed it. That was a 14-yard pickup, and Salisbury going deep for Carter again. Caught at the one-yard line. Oh, wow. I mentioned about Carter coming from Philadelphia, cut by Buddy Ryan, and that's what he did for the Eagles. 11 touchdowns <laughs> in that season of 89. Ryan let him go, and he made many of them just like that by going up and taking it away from a defender. Kirk Loudermilk, the center, gives Carter a headbutt on the one-yard line and almost knocks <laughs> him out the back of the end zone. This a fire. Denny Green all week. We have to get off to a quick start. Oh, we can't a... allow the Redskins to dictate to us the pace of the game. I would classify this as a quick start. That's a great catch by Carter. Mayhew, great position on him. He just went up and took it away. Randall McDaniel, the guard, is the fullback in the eye, and he leads the way for Allen's touchdown. Seventy-nine yard drive, the big play, the forty-two yard pass to Carter. The drive began with a measurement on third down for a first down. They converted and they keep on going and lead six up. Well, what this drive also started with, Alan Frank, was a number of successful running plays. They hammered away for a couple first downs on the ground, exactly the way you'd like to get started. Soften things up in the middle and then throw the ball. And Salisbury, whatever jitters he had are long gone as he stakes his team to the seven nothing lead. Juan Reves for the point after. Allen caps off this long drive, 79 yards in four minutes and 55 seconds. Minnesota seven, Washington nothing. Sean Salisbury guiding the Vikings and Allen making it pay off at the end. Chris Carter, the big man on the other end of Sean's passes. Watt Reves to kick off, and Washington will get the ball for the first time with Minnesota leading 7 to nothing. Brian Mitchell is back to take it in at the 8-yard line. And good Viking coverage. A 9-yard run back up to the 17-yard line. Brent Novoselsky. Makes the stop. ABC's NFC wildcard playoff game is being brought to you by Pontiac and your nearby Pontiac dealers. We are driving excitement. By cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Get out of the old and into the cold. By the Business Services Division of MCI and by Delta Airlines. We love to fly and it shows. Mark Griffin and the Skins from the 17 yard line. And this is Ernest Biner going nowhere. Loss of two at the 15. The Vikings very quick off the line, as they normally are. Mark Griffin, a fabulous year. Last year, Super Bowl MVP, a whole other story. 13 TDs, 17 interceptions this season. 
Now he's got Biner with that bad back and no Ricky Irvins to back up Biner. Clark, Monk, and uh, Terry Orr with Middleton in the double tight end setup. Lachey, Brown, McKenzie, Schlereth, and Simmons, the offensive line. Ricky Sanders, by the way, is in uniform. He missed last week's game. The wide receiver with the bad ankle can play today. On second and 12, this is Biner. Up to the 20-yard line, and it'll be third down and seven. McMillan makes the tackle. Let's take a look at the Viking defense with that great front four. Noga, Thomas, Randall, and Dolman playing back to his form of a couple of seasons ago. Jenkins, Del Rio, a tremendous plan B pickup from Dallas and Merriweather. Lee with McMillan. McMillan will go to the Pro Bowl. And then Scott and Glenn. Vincy Glenn last week, three interceptions in the game against the Packers here. Ricky Sanders is in the game. That is Ricky number 83, setting up slot right and now in motion and setting up slot left. And on third and seven, John Randall will contend he was induced across the line and probably lose the argument. Well, maybe not. Before the snap, defense, five yards, still he wasn't induced. Now, the Vikings get a lot of these calls. If you follow them over the season, they are a quick football team. They play the gaps. All four of them, Dolman and Randall and Thomas and Noga, they hit gaps. Denny Green's philosophy is we're not that big, as is Tony Dungy, the defensive coordinator. We're not that big. Let's hit the gaps and hit them as quickly as we can. They try and anticipate the count, and they get a lot of offsides called against them. Third and two at the 25-yard line. 7 nothing Minnesota. 8.08 to play in the first quarter. Rippin, who passes a lot on third and short, throws to the 31-yard line, and it is caught. Great catch by Gary Clark going to the turf to pull it in, covered by Lee. And an excellent throw by Rippin. Down to the inside. No chance of that being intercepted, and that's the kind of a pass Mark would like to start this game on. Watch, watch the throw. Watch how crisply it's delivered. There is no possibility of that being of that being intercepted. Did it touch the ground? That's a great catch by Gary Clark. That is an excellent catch by Clark. Terry Orr lining up in the backfield and going in motion and providing some leverage. Instead, it is Mark Rippon to the 32-yard line. Safe to say a blown play. Yes, I, would say. <laughs> I mean, Joe Gibbs is uh, fanciful with his offense, but uh, they got a little more fanciful with him. Yep. Absolutely. You knew I was in trouble when uh, you Moore got all confused in there. You see that hand sign right there? That's what that play looked like. <laughs> Fingers going in all different directions. Gary Conklin, who is the backup quarterback, they carry three quarterbacks to the Redskins. Jeff Rutledge is number three. It is second down and 10 at the 32. 7-0 Minnesota, 6.40 to go in the opening quarter. Here's Finer to the 35-yard line. It'll be third down and seven. Del Rio and Thomas converge on the tackle. You can see, I think, a pattern from Washington's point of view. When they are going to run, they would prefer to run to their left side behind number 79 there, Jim Lachey. Chris Dolman, by far and away the best pass rusher, of the Vikings, but they feel that the matchup against the run, Lachey against Dolman, the Redskins believe favors them. Well, you'd rather go at him, have him pursuing it too. Third and seven at the 34-yard line. It's Monk in motion. Rippin steps up, gets the pass away, and it's caught, and it's very close to a first down, but appears to be a little short. Art Monk came down with it. Carl Lee with the coverage up at the 42-yard line. Chris Dolman that time putting the pressure oh, man. on Rippon. He, Rippon calculated this just right to get rid of it. Dolman against Lachey just gives him a little bump. He gets around him, and he just about flicks it out of the hand of Rippon. He was so far outside Lachey, easily 8 to 10 feet, and you can see on that re replay that Chris got the head start. He got the jump on the ball. Very awkward for a tackle to have to block somebody who's two places removed. And you see that completion is good for the first down. But the farther away Dolman gets from Lachey, the more difficult it is for Lachey to block him. 
tell you, there's some gut checks going on, too, for these Washington Redskins out there. Biner is playing hurt. Let's take a look again. Dan said way outside of Lachey, and he's very athletic, this big man Lachey. You see that a few offensive left tackles you find doing that, wouldn't you say, Dan? Yeah, I agree. A lot of guys never even would have made it to the to the intercept point, would have never even made it to the corner to get into Goldman's leg. They gave Monk a good spot on that last yeah. play, a seven-yard gain. They convert first down at the 42-yard line, and Rippon fires for a five-yard pickup to Ricky Sanders, who was bothered by a gimpy ankle. Carr leave with the coverage on the play. But Ricky Sanders is going to be a very important man for them today because Monk has been not as much a part of their passing offense as in years past. And Ricky's a big play guy. Well, he's a third down guy. He's got more third down receptions than anyone on this team. There is Monk who play the inside position where Sanders ordinarily is if Sanders has to leave the game. But Sanders, another one of these Redskins playing hurt today. The season's over. If they lose, you may as well let it go. Rippin is three for his first three. And they give it to Biner. And Biner is stopped after a pickup of maybe one by Mike Merriweather. It'll be third down and five at the Metrodome where indoors the temperature is 66. And outside they told us a kickoff it was 20. And that's a heat wave here. Yes. We've been here uh, since New Year's Eve and the temperature has rarely gone above zero. Pass situation now with the rescue. Now watch that Viking front four. We talked about it already how quick they are off the ball anticipating pass they'll just be blowing through there third down and five with Sanders in motion four man rush Biner makes the catch and is buried by Lee who's been in on a lot of plays already at the 49 and it's fourth and three well, the Vikings have given up perhaps more passes underneath than any team in the league certainly right up there with the league leaders but they are good tacklers they let you make the completion and then they shut it down and that's what happened right there short of the first down well Carl Lee who's been a Pro Bowl player in the past I don't think he's used to having this much business come his way this early in a ball game they have come right at Carl Lee and he has uh, he answered that one Kelly Goodburn who averaged less than 40 yards a kick this season Anthony Parker back to receive is a 42-yard punt taken by Parker at the nine. And a 12-yard run back to the 21, run out of bounds by Johnny Thomas. We have 3-0-4 remaining in the first quarter in this NFC wildcard game in Minneapolis. 7-0 Vikings. The Chiefs were expected to win the division, but San Diego ran away with the crown. Now these two rivals meet in game two of our playoff doubleheader today on ABC Sports. This is the fifth time that the Skins and the Vikings have met in postseason play. They're two and two, and as you can see, each time they've met, the team that has won the game has advanced to the Super Bowl, including as recently as 87, when Washington beat Minnesota and wound up beating Denver in San Diego in the Super Bowl. This is Roger Craig on his first carry and he has run out of bounds by Andre Collins. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Pontiac and your nearby Pontiac dealers. We are driving excitement by cold filtered Miller genuine draft get out of the old and into the cold by the business services of MCI and by Delta Airlines. We'd love to fly and it shows. They use Roger Craig as a little more than just relief for Terry Allen. He's had a pretty good year, over 400 yards rushing, 22 receptions. Very good receiver out of the backfield, as you can recall from his great days with the 49ers and a year ago with the Raiders. Very effective out of the backfield as a receiver. Second and 10, fake to Craig. And Salisbury going deep, and his contact, but incidental on a pass intended for Anthony Carter, picked off by Mayu. And Mayu with a great run back out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Gary Zimmerman guided him out as he took it all the way back to just about the line of scrimmage. You could see that Anthony Carter lost his footing about three or four yards before the pass got there and allowed Mayhew to basically just watch right here. Watch Carter loses his footing. And so uncontested Martin Mayhew is able to intercept that pass. So a big return sets Washington up in their best position. 
Salisbury throwing the interception. The man on the right, Jack Burns, was a Redskin assistant last year and then got the job as the offensive coordinator here when Dennis Green took over as the head coach. That was a 44-yard interception return, and Ernest Biner on first down takes it to the 31 with 2.15 to play in the opening quarter, 7 to nothing, Minnesota. That's a good look there at Henry Thomas, how he got across the line of scrimmage. It's, they still play defense the way Floyd Peters, who's the defensive coordinator in Tampa now, used to coach it. He, he told his front four, I want you to rush the passer every down. And if by chance you happen to run into the guy who's carrying the ball, well, then that's a bonus. That's still the way this Viking front four attacks the line of scrimmage. On second and eight, this is Monk on a sweep. And he takes it to the 27-yard line. Mike Merriweather in on the tackle. You know, you wonder if they may may or may not use more of those types of plays today, especially in the absence of Ricky Irvins and all of the pressure on Ernest Biner. And we can tell you following this one, on to San Diego we go. Brent Musburger and Dick Vermeule are there today as the Chiefs take on the Chargers. Well, that time, Monk worked right out of the backfield. Again, as you pointed out, Biner hurting Ricky Irvins with a very bad ankle. Not dressed. Could see a lot of that. Third and four at the 27-yard line. That's Ron Middleton in motion. And it's Ernest Biner. That's an incomplete on a pass. Complete pass. A forward pass, and it's simply an incomplete pass. And the Redskins can't convert. And we'll have to settle for a field goal attempt. The pressure that time put on by Al Noga, number 99. Shame of it is for Washington. Look at Biner and how open he is. Whoa. He's got the blocker out front and Ray Brown. And it's hard to conceive that Biner wouldn't have picked up enough yardage for at least the first down. So and he just took his eyes off and yep. ripped and laid it in there just soft as a pillow. And he just would look for a, his next move in the run, took his eyes off the ball and lost it. 44-yard field goal attempt for Chip Lowmiller, who is terrific on artificial turf. And terrific in this stadium. He played his college ball at the University of Minnesota. And Chip Lowmiller loves the Metrodome. He was 32 of 37 here as a collegian. Five for five back in October. That's six for six this year. Regular season. Five and now this one. There it was during the... Uh, the uh, career of Chip Lowmiller on grass fields 40 percent but you put him on this stuff and uh, better than four of every five from 40 through 49 yards his 44 yarder has made it seven to three Minnesota and his kickoff is short taken at the 10 by Darren Nelson who comes back to the 23 yard line Nelson getting in kind of an extra year here he might have gone to Stanford as an assistant coach for Dennis Green had Dennis not taken this job and remained out west well, there was one violent collision on that kickoff return, and there is a Redskin that is Johnny Thomas, I believe, mm -hmm. is still down on the carpet. Johnny Thomas. Yeah, you're right about Dennis Green and Stanford. Of course, now Bill Walsh at Stanford. They just won their bowl game. Darren Nelson, a Stanford grad, and wrapping up his 11th year in the National Football League. And for a guy 5'9 and 186 pounds, it has been a remarkable career for Darren Nelson. Mm -hmm. and, uh, this guy right here, fascinating study, Dennis Green. He, he has an interesting philosophy, Frank, talking about his defensive approach when he was uh, visiting with us yesterday, talking about how the way he wants his team to be aggressive. He believes that if you're aggressive, you win. If you're not aggressive, he used the term victim. He said, if you're not aggressive, you're a victim. And he said, I will never have a football team that is a victim. And that's certainly the way they attack it, both offensively and defensively. And when you look at him, he, uh, you, don't, uh, you don't get that initial sense of the fire that burns inside Dennis Green. Uh, Johnny Thomas, that's man. good to see. Yep. Hey, it is. So de uh, decisive when he decides to do something. That's the first thing he came in here. He looked around and said, we got some problems here. Let's get rid of them. And let's bring in some people that will get this thing done for us. He, there are 18 different players on this roster from the 8-8 eight eight team of a year ago. Five plan B, five rookies, and uh, they're 11 and 5. So, you know, he's done something right, and he's done it quickly. It's also a small football team. They are not a big 
group of earth movers like you see in a lot of other NFL teams. Small for the most part. And speedy from the 24-yard line. On first down, a fumble, and Salisbury has to cover it up at the 21. And he and Roger Craig couldn't get together on the handoff. So Roger Craig starting this series as he did the last. Uh, this team reminds me of one other ball club uh, size-wise. I was going to say the Dallas the, Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys and toss in the 49ers. Lots of speed, a lot of quickness. Yeah. And that ball was lost as he came away from the center. That's all very. Loss of three, second and 13 at the 21. 25 ticks remaining in the first quarter. Vikings up seven to three as Roger Craig fights for a gain of four. He takes it to the 25. Jason Buck makes the tackle on what should be the final play of the first quarter. How have teams that played in domes fared in terms of going to the Super Bowl? They've never been there. Look at that through the years. And you say, what about the Vikings? They've been there four times, but each time they went, their home was old Metropolitan Stadium. No dome team has ever gotten to the Super Bowl. It's the end of the quarter. It's 7-3 to three Vikings. And back we come with our wild card playoff game after this message and a word from our ABC station. The Metrodome in Minneapolis. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deardorff start the second quarter. Vikings on top, 7-3. to three. It is third and nine for Minnesota at their own 25-yard line. And Salisbury finds the open man. That's Carter making the catch for a first down of the 46. Chris Carter tackled by Brad Edwards. Got good position on him. Wilbur Marshall put the pressure on Salisbury, who hung in there and got it to Chris Carter for a 21-yard gain. Carter just driving downfield. The Redskins in the zone defense. Carter reads it. Watch him kind of ease up here. Sets up. Salisbury reads it with him. Perfect delivery. Big pickup. And what a difference this Minnesota Viking offense is with Carter. Look how he reads that zone. Salisbury right with him and delivers it. Kudos to Gary Zimmerman that last play. Excellent blocking on Marshall. Here's Cray going nowhere. Uh -oh. And Tim Johnson. He looks hurt. He acts like something no, bothered him on that. Made the tackle, but uh, he hobbles back into the huddle. Richie Pettibone breathing easier. And our wild card playoff game is being brought to you by Chrysler Plymouth, the division of the Chrysler Corporation. Terry Allen comes back in the game. There is Richie Pettibone, the defensive coordinator, as it were, for the Redskins. And the man a lot of people think should someday be an NFL head coach. I'm one of them. But they've been saying it for a long time. And on second and ten, the pass is incomplete. A little too low for Chris Carter, who's already caught three. Martin Mayhew with the coverage. Richie's been around 15 years with the Redskins. Uh, before that, 14 years as a player. And Salisbury threw that in there low. I mean, he did it deliberately, and it was a tough catch, but one that certainly could have been caught by Carter. And it was a good delivery by Salisbury. Third and 10, Minnesota perfect thus far on third down conversions. pressure and Allen makes the catch but Wilbur Marshall is right there to wrap him up after a gain of three at the 49 yard line and that'll create Minnesota's first punt of the day and that's really the defensive alignment I think Pettibone would rather see Wilbur back in the field where he can make plays get an interception knock a ball loose and going with four other people rushing the quarterback Wilbur Marshall is a good pass rusher, but to me, he's a more valuable asset when he's roaming in that middle ground where he can make a big play. Harry Newsom, second in the league in punting this year to only the Oilers' Greg Montgomery, sends it down to the 17-yard line. And this is Brian Mitchell. Mitchell across the 50. And Mitchell is brought down from behind at the 28-yard line as Jake Reed, the wide receiver out of Grambling, saves a touchdown. Well, we know that Reed has got some speed now. Mitchell, a gifted return man, a, a very valuable part of this Washington Redskins team, and you saw why there. A little step now, 
Back to the inside, spots the gap, kicks it into another gear, gets away from the punter, and then watch Reed run him down. Well, if Newsom did one thing, he went to the left side and forced Mitchell back to the middle of the field. The decision by Newsom to attack from that side, if he, he didn't know it at the time, but it, uh, it ran Mitchell back towards Reed. Well, Reed got some speed to that. Hey, and there's a no contest in a match race there. That was a 34-yard Newsom punt and a 54-yard run back. First down, Washington at the 29-yard line. Biner going nowhere. Carlos Jenkins first to greet him at the line of scrimmage, number 51. Goldman also there. Jenkins, one of the many changes in this defensive unit for the Vikings from a year ago. They moved Randall from defensive end, John Randall to defense for the defensive tackle from defensive end. They brought in Carlos Jenkins, and they had to get him some playing time, so they moved Mike Merriweather over to the weak side, put Jenkins on the strong side. So many changes, and they have been so effective. Second and 10. 12.05 to go in the half. Vikings on top, 7-3. To Monk in motion. Ripping with good protection, and has it picked off off the deflection, and up to the 36-yard line goes Todd Scott. Carl Lee created the interception. He was the Viking who got his hand on it, and Todd Scott runs it back to the 36-yard line. Boy, this what has to puzzle you if you're Joe Gibbs, you're a Redskins fan. Lee was right in the line of sight of Mark Rippon. There he is, right in the line of sight. He throws it right into his hand. Anytime Scott intercepts a pass, all Viking fans think back to October 4th. It was 20 to nothing Chicago at that point. Scott intercepts the Harbaugh pass off the audible that turned Chicago season south and sent Minnesota season north. Two weeks later, they killed Chicago in Chicago, and they were on their way. And here is Terry Allen on first down after the turnover up to the 40-yard line. Well, the, the last one was a gift uh, from Carl Lee because Carl Lee had the ball right in his chest. It should have been Lee's interception, and instead he mishandles it, and it pops right up into the air, and uh, the alert Scott picks it off. But look at this. Look. Look at Mark Rippon. Apparently, it almost looks like he's staring at Carl Lee. Lee doesn't handle it, and, and Scott is there for the INT. But again, that, that was an excellent look at the Washington quarterback staring right at number 39, Carl Lee. I don't, I don't know what Mark must have been thinking. On second and seven from the 40. And that pass is picked off by Brad Edwards. <laughs> and Edwards to the 33-yard line after faking the lateral and holding on, and Washington with a big break, and Wilbur Marshall with the pressure that time on Salisbury. Yeah, Wilbur came on a blitz up the middle, and he flushed Salisbury, and, and this was the type of, uh, of a motion that Richie Pettibone wanted to create. Salisbury is a classic sit-in-the-pocket quarterback. They want him on the move. Look, look at that's Edwards. a ball that just sails on him, Frank. Great hands. Now, yeah. he almost laterals the ball off to Mann here. Mann standing there, hey, I want it. And he very wisely tucks it away. But that's a relatively easy completion to Chris Carter. That ball just floated and sailed on Sean Salisbury. But that's where the Redskins want him. They want him moving, flushed from the pocket. Edwards intercepted six during the regular season. First down at the 33. And it's a two-yard gain for Ernest Biner. Down to the 31-yard line. It'll be second and eight with 10.55 to go in the half. That is about the fifth time that the Redskins have opened up a first down with a run to the left side, and they are not getting a lot out of it. There's Lachey, 79. A good job of getting up underneath Dolman, but then Dolman doesn't give more than a yard. And it's a negligible gain of only two yards on first down. It's a pretty stout Viking defensive line on first down so far in this game. On second and eight, that's Ron Middleton in motion out of the full house backfield. And the pass is low and incomplete, intended for Ernest Biner. It'll be third down and eight. Frank, I don't know. That's just a horrible pass by an NFL quarterback. Well, I, you, know, I, you almost have to think the confidence is just gone. Uh, he's been abused ever since he reported late to camp this year. 
Uh, nothing ever got in sync. The same people were there early in the season, then the injuries came, but, but there's no way to explain that one. There's no way to explain the one that Lee deflected into Scott for the interception. It's just lack of your own personal confidence, I would have to say. That's Corey Conklin, the backup Redskin quarterback. He's number two in line. Third down and eight at the 31 yard line. And Rippin guns it incomplete, and a flag comes down at the 18. Art Monk, the intended receiver, and Todd Scott gets up and can't believe he saw the flag. Well, he might believe it when we run the replay. Monk is complaining, too, that he was hit early. Pass interference, number 38, defense. Automatic first down. Del Rio is saying it shouldn't be pass interference because the pass was deflected. They're all looking up at the scoreboard, but Scott either arrived absolutely perfectly or just a fraction early. And he was bitterly complaining. Was it deflected first? Let's take a look at that first. No, it wasn't. Now, Scott makes the contact, not the definitive angle to see it from there. Let's take another look. This will give you a good view. Did he hit him early? I think he did. Oh, that's, <laughs> I think that's the type of a play that Todd Scott and Tony Dungy would tell him to make every time. Mm -hmm. I, I think that'll get flagged fewer times than it, will, than it won't. At the 18-yard line, here's Biner, and Biner throwing against the grain, and it is picked off, but out of the end zone was Vincey Glenn. He came down with it, and one official not making the call. The other with a better view said he was out of the end zone. Uh, Biner should have talking. pulled that ball and down and run with the football. They didn't buy that at all. They're still talking about it, but I think that's way out of the back of the end zone. <laughs> now, the one official who didn't make a call obviously felt that he didn't see enough. All right, watch number 25. There's the right, and the yeah, left is out of bounds. That's a, good, uh, that's a good work by an mm -hmm. officiating crew. The one who didn't see it well enough didn't make the call. The one who did came up. He was decisive. Call him out of the back of the end zone. Second and 10 at the 19-yard line. 10-12 to go in the half. 7-3 Minnesota. Ripping. Incomplete. Good coverage on Gary Clark. And a flag is down back at the 24-yard line. One of the things the Vikings do is create a lot of holding calls against opposing offensive lines and that's what they're hoping for. illegal formation offense well do you back them up or do you take the down Jim Hannafin the uh, offensive line coach and the renaissance man of that staff yeah, you decline it that's what you do illegal formation two eligibles up on the line of scrimmage on the left side of the line the penalty is declined. Third down. The end man on the line of scrimmage is eligible. And in the Redskin formation, the tight end was supposed to be eligible right here. This guy needed to be back a yard. As you can see, two eligible players are both on the line at the same time. It's third and 10, and it's caught at the four-yard line by Art Monk for a first down and it will be first and goal. And again, the zone defense, they stayed in it even deep in their own territory. Muck came all the way from the left side, took it down deep, brought it across, and that time Rippon, how do you explain it? That was a perfectly thrown ball, had a lot of smoke on it, hit Muck right in the numbers between two defenders. It couldn't be thrown better. It's almost like those are the passes that Mark Rippon is throwing better than the shorter touch passes. Seems the more he's able to crank it up and let it go, the better success he has. First and goal, and they give it to Biner. And Ernest, looking for a yes. signal, gets it. Touchdown, Ernest Biner. Behind Mark Schlereth on the right side, putting it into the end zone to give Washington its first lead of the day. You're watching the Redskins, man. I'll tell you, they can, they can hurt you, and then they can bring you back. Well, yeah, this is heartbreakers. This is excellent blocking at the point of attack. Lachey, Middleton, Schlereth pulls around. Watch the blocking there on the right side of your screen. Here comes Schlereth around. There's Middleton's block on Dolman. Schlereth pins Merriweather to the inside, and you got a touchdown. Low Miller for the point after. And so, 
the interception sets it up. The key third down completion to Monk. The touchdown by Biner. And with 9.23 to go in the half, the Skins lead by three. The Chiefs were expected to win the division, but San Diego ran away with the crown. Now these two rivals meet in game two of our playoff doubleheader today on ABC Sports. Chip Lowmiller's kickoff is fielded by Darren Nelson at the 11-yard line, and Nelson swings outside and takes it to the 29-yard line. The tackle is made by A.J. Johnson. Well, the Minnesota Vikings find themselves trailing for the first time today with 9-14 to play in the first half. 10-7 to Washington. pay off this year a whole other thing as the last seed you're never home no you know? you're never home and 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 Joe Gibbs Frank won't you agree he'll be the first one to tell you we don't deserve to be home I mean he is as grateful as a coach can be having made it at nine and seven he likes the situation top of the show is that it'll take a miracle and he smiled about it I think he kind of like that situation here's Terry Allen picking up a couple well, it's a it's a miracle that they're here and of course last week when they finished their game Saturday against the Raiders they thought they were done for the for the offseason. The irony of the Vikings knocking the Green Bay Packers out of it 24 hours later to bring them back into it. And it's the same old story, and this is why Minnesota was so concerned. I mean, never have the defending world champions gotten as much sympathy as the Redskins are getting right now. And, and Denny Green doesn't want to hear anything about it. He knows how formidable and dangerous the Redskins are, hurt or healthy. On uh, second and seven, this is Terry Allen with room to roll and a first down and still going and fights his way out to the 47 yard line. Still going and going <laughs> and going. That's a gain of 15 for Terry Allen as you look at Roger Hedrick who's the key man the head of the Minnesota Vikings. And he over the right side behind big Tim Irwin and Brian Habib is Terry Allen, a lot of people might wonder why isn't he in there all the time and so much of the time shared with Roger Craig. Usually maybe six plays for Roger, ten for Terry Allen. Allen, obviously younger, stronger, faster, quicker, and a real fine football player. And a gain of a yard or two as he takes it to the 49 with 7.50 to go in the half. Do you have an answer for that question? Well, I was going to say, they like to, Terry Allen can take himself out. I mean, he, he is a, he lets it go at, full speed all the time and often he'll just tap himself I want out and now he comes out in comes Roger Craig and of course Craig as I mentioned earlier a real good receiver out of the backfield he offers you something that Terry Allen doesn't out of the backfield even though Allen had uh, 49 receptions this year five yard average what Allen has so far today that works for me second and eight at the 49 yard line Salisbury and that's Brock Anthony Carter oh, on the 40 yard line and Mayhew might have gotten a hand on it. Martin Mayhew. Mayhew he had, it. he had an INT. He had an interception in his hands. Boy, are they happy to have him back? Ooh. Oh boy, that ball bounces from Anthony Carter. It's a perfect throw by Salisbury. Right on Carter's hands, and look at that. It caroms right over to Martin Mayhew. The Chief right. had a bone. What did you say last night? We're going to have to roll the dice. We've got a lot of people playing hurt. Just as we do on the offense, we're going to take some chances and hope it works for us. Rippin warming up. Skins have intercepted Salisbury on Minnesota's last two possessions. And nearly there. Third down and eight. They roll the dice here. They roll the dice. And Salisbury's pass is incomplete, intended for Chris Carter at the 41 yard line. And when you have a young quarterback, as Dan pointed out, that's only made five starts, will get people in his face. Frighten him a little bit if you can. I don't mean physically scare him, but make him wonder about whether he's going to find a receiver looking downfield. Make him a little anxious. Do things like that. As a matter of fact, that could have been caught, but it was thrown very low. It was thrown low and it was thrown soft. That's, that's the most difficult pass to catch. It's dying. It has no momentum when it comes to you, and you can see it just bounces off. Carter's hand. Still, though, I agree. He could have caught it. Here's Newsom's kick. And his fair caught at the 13. It's a 38 yard punt. Brian Mitchell with a fair catch, and that's where the skins will take over. 7.03 left in the first half.
Diego is the site following this game the Kansas City Chiefs against the San Diego Chargers on ABC and then the tomorrow there's our primetime lineup the Amy Fisher Film Festival continues our turn tomorrow <laughs> on ABC there it is there's the lineup at the 13 yard line Brian Mitchell is in the game as the tailback and he gets the ball and Brian Mitchell out to the 23 yard line a nine yard gain Jenkins makes the tackle as we mentioned at the beginning Ricky Irvins is hurt he is not even dressed today so Biner is the main man needs some backup help and it comes here in the form of Brian Mitchell the kick returner that's only a seventh carry of the season and if we go beyond that we'll go down to uh, Robert Green the rookie free agent from William and Mary Biner who had to take himself out of Ricky Irvins had to take himself out of the game two yards short of a thousand yard season last week against the Raiders on second and one they give it to Mitchell again and look what the Redskins have found well and they the found flag down at the 28 oh, that's going to bring it back oh yeah we have a hopping mad Redskin that Ron Middleton jumping up and down I mean he is this guy was uh, doing a pretty good standing high jump he's incensed that he was called if it was him holding number 87 offense 10 yards repeat second down I mean there are ways to express unhappiness if you are flagged for holding and then there's Ron Middleton's way <laughs> I want my blanket well there's there's no doubt that you're telling everybody at home and in the stadium it was on you oh, that, that hurts. hurts that sure did took a first down now into a, a second and long second and 11 at the 13 yard line. And Nova comes across the line. Redskins, of course, with all of their shifting and all of their motion. Noga was saying he was drawn up by Simmons. Well, but Simmons is going to say that I didn't move until Noga was way across the line of scrimmage. They'll have an argument here. Gordon McCarter will have the final say. And he says. Ball starts. 76 offense. Five yards. Still second down. Well, one you can't the, hiccup. No, one of the great disadvantages of being an offensive lineman, when you go down into that three-point stance, any movement, I see that little twitch. In fact, it was a double twitch, and that got Noga going. You just can't do it. And now the crowd noise here at the Metrodome. Jim Hannafin, uh, I can only assume that Hannafin, that movement was so minute that he didn't see it from the Redskin bench because it was a good call by the official. He was just told of the movement. Yeah, yeah. Now he'll just be mad at Simmons. Second and 16. And Rippon throws a strike to the 22-yard line to Clark, who nearly has his head taken off. And the helmet Late comes flag. Loose. Mike Merriweather was the man who made the tackle. Flag came in at the end. And, and Gary Clark took a chance. He was losing yardage in an attempt to pick up yardage when he was within a yard of the first down marker. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness by the tackler. He grabbed the headgear and wrenched the man down by the headgear. 15 yards from the dead ball spot, first down. He was the wrencher and Clark was the wrenchee. And you're right, Dan, he lost a couple of yards trying to pick up the artist for the first down and they will get it on the penalty. The officials really react if you get up anywhere around the head with a forearm when you're trying to make a tackle and they get Merriweather. Clark has a hold of both the ball and the helmet and pleased to see in the helmet. <laughs> but a, what a great football player he is. He, Mr. Clutch should have called on today to pick up a lot of slack because of the injury to Ricky Sanders. And, you know that's a tough that's a tough call on Mary yeah, it is Clark is running right back to him that's an instinctive thing to throw out your arm first down up at the 37 yard line and Rippin going deep and uh, a little too deep off the fingertips of Art Monk oh I don't know that it's so close to perfect mm. and it had to be thrown perfect because Monk was splitting the zone deep downfield and Rippin threw it exactly where he had to throw it did you hear the crowd groan, guys? That was Jim Lachey working on Chris Dolman. 
the crowd, uh, they were looking for flags to come pouring in on a holding call. This is how close Art Monk comes to, to making the big play. And as you said, Frank, the ball's just, just a little long. He is there, and that would have been another big Washington play. So close. Art Monk, who's caught more passes than anybody in the history of the National Football League, 8.47. Here is Mitchell up to the 44 yard line he goes setting up a third down and three with 505 remaining in the half. I mentioned before on the previous play the the war the Dolman and Lachey look at the top of the screen 79 against 56. Now Dolman just takes a bull rush to the inside and that's why the crowd was moaning and groaning. Jim Lachey just got powered backwards by by Dolman and you won't see that very often. 66 300 pounds of superior athlete. This is steel on steel. Lachey and Dolman. Third and 3. Four and a half to go in the half. 10-7 Washington. Here comes Dolman ripping underneath and Mitchell drops it but there's a flag down. Flag down. Back at the 38 yard line. And so is Rippin. Remember last October the 25th? I don't think I ever saw a quarterback take the pounding he did here. It's against the Redskins, and so the Vikings are going to get Holden, the football. Number 87 offense, friendly declined, fourth down. Sometimes better to hold than let your quarterback take a full shot, and better to not demonstrate too much after you are flagged for holding. Ron Middleton called again for holding by the officiating crew, and that's right, Ron. I would just seek the shelter of the sidelines. Well, he's, he's out working on Dolman. Yep, and Dolman gets him to the inside. Save your quarterback. Oh, I didn't. I didn't even see the hold. Dolman beat him so cleanly. I don't think he had a chance to hold it. Penalty decline. It's fourth down at the 44-yard line. Oh, and it's a fake. And it is Brian Mitchell inside the 40, inside the 30. Biggest play of the game takes it to the 18-yard line. They've run that before. They've run that with a lot of success. Brian Mitchell, the up back with a first down inside the 20-yard line. Oh, and you've got to be, if, if you're a special teams coach, they come out of that formation at field. They're going to go on short yardage. Everything was set up for it, and it works. Well executed. Brian Mitchell, why not? He does. We did a Monday night game where he finished up the game as quarterback. Wayne Severe rejoicing with his big first down. You work a long time. You start in July, and it pays off in January. And it starts with the center guy, Bingham, with a perfect snap. Ernest Miner inside the 15, takes it down to the 11-yard line. Gain of seven. Wayne Severe with a smile on his face. Any special teams coach would be grinning. That's a, it's the biggest play of the half. They're up by three. Minnesota was going to get the ball back, and now Washington's in the position to go up by 10. Such a, such a special teams tradition in our nation's capital in Washington. Started with George Allen, who really devoted so much time to special teams. Then Rusty Tillman took over for years. And it continues today. Second and three. Here's Viner. And he can't get outside as Todd Scott comes up to make the tackle. Boy, no matter what happens from here on out, the flag is down. You're gonna have the players down. You're gonna have to admire this Redskins team because Minnesota comes down there immediately and scores, and they have battled and scrambled back. And Jim Lachey now, who was out earlier in the season on IR with an injured knee. Oh, this is huge. down once again, and this is major, major for the Redskins. Joe Jacoby is healthy. He's had a, a long time to rest, and he's the first guy in. But this, this is a major blow to the Redskins if Lachey can't continue. And he gets up and looks like he's favoring his right leg hobbling off. His was a knee problem earlier, as I mentioned, and for Jacoby, a back problem that took him out of play on and off throughout the course of the season. But if you have to bring somebody in to go against a Chris Dolman, well, you may as well bring in the former All-Pro at that position, Joe Jacoby. Yeah, but I think Joe Jacoby is saying to himself, how about a running play to get started? Uh, <laughs> how, how about a tight end over here with me? <laughs> Let's not, uh, don't make me go one-on-one -on -one right off the bat. Third down and five. Very big play for the Vikings defense to try to hold him to a field goal attempt. 
And it's Biner making the catch, and Biner is at the eight-yard line, and that should be enough for a first down. And Jacoby with a good piece of work on Dolman. They left him all alone out there on Dolman. They're going to measure, but uh, from our vantage point, and you can see where the marker was, it appears they have it. Well, well, thought he would have, somebody would have helped him out, but they left him alone, Dan. Well, look how he gets into Dolman. When Joe Jacoby gets inside the framework of your arms, you are had. I mean, that is the end of that. Dolman cannot afford to lock up with Big Joe. A lockup favors the offensive lineman. A quicker guy like Dolman has to maintain separation. He has to keep himself at at least arm's length. Right there where Jacoby has his helmet into Dolman's chest, he has won. The block is over as far as Dolman is concerned. And Lachey trying to get it loose over on the sidelines. Separation is the key for a quick guy like Chris Dolman. It is first and goal at the eight-yard line, and the Redskins are going to let the clock tick down to the two-minute warning. First and goal when we come back with Washington on top, 10-7. It's here because it's 10 to 7. Washington trying to get into the end zone, obviously, which will put them up by 10. Jim Lachey is back in the game. They have a first and goal at the eight yard line, and the, each team has all of its timeouts remaining. Washington on first and goal. A terrible time this year. They've gotten in only half the time, time for the lowest percentage in the National Football League. That's a shocker. Yes. Brian Mitchell is inside the five. Brian Mitchell is in for the touchdown. As well blocked an offensive play as you will ever see. Brilliant execution by the Redskins. The lead blockers, the tight ends, and the offensive line, Frank. That is just, that's beautiful. Minnesota thinking pass. We talked about the size. They're small up front. They're thinking pass. You come at the draw play. They're in their pass rush mode, and the Redskins blocked it out beautifully. And Merriweather, 57, watch him to the right. He's going to be the only Viking with a clean shot, and he falls off Brian Mitchell. Mike Merriweather could have made that play up around the five-yard line. He's unaccounted for and doesn't make the play, and flags are all over the place. That's one thing. Uh, those outside linebackers, Dan, are small. Merriweather, great player that he is, is a 225-pounder. The other one, Jenkins, about a 215-pounder. And with somebody like a Brian Mitchell, a 200-pound running back, you, you're going to have a hard time bringing him down the side. Yeah, but you can't confuse Brian Mitchell with Christian Okoye. Snap, 99 <laughs> defense. Five yards will be assessed on the kickoff. Well blocked out. Joe oh. Gibbs has to be proud of that. Has to be really proud of what's going on here today. Russ Grimm. They didn't have anyone to practice this week. They had one wide receiver on one day that they were working. Well, here's Low Miller for the point after with 156 to go in the half. And so that fake punt and Brian Mitchell executing the fake punt, going into the end zone, picking up with Ricky Irvin's hurt. And the Skins have scored 17 unanswered points to lead by 10. This become Brian Mitchell's favorite crew when we did a, a Monday night game in Philadelphia in 1990. That's the game we talked about before he came in was the quarterback when uh, the Skins had so many injuries and that was the only time he had rushed for a touchdown in his career prior to right now. What did Joe Gibbs say though about him? He, you know, he has a lot of confidence in him but he is so valuable as a return man. He said they are so hard to come by in this league. He's such a great return man. We don't want to risk it. And so I'll tell you how far they've gone. They have to risk it. Ten well, plays, 86 yards, and of course the fake punt was the key. And now we'll see how Minnesota answers this offensively. Favored in the game, trailing by 10. Low Miller sends it down to the four-yard line. This is Joe Johnson, the former Redskin, and he gets taken down up at the 24-yard line with John Brantley making the tackle. Jack Kent Cook on your left, the owner of the Redskins. And Charlie Cassidy on your right, the general manager of the Redskins. Charlie Cassidy, what a fine job he's done since Bobby Beathard went out to San Diego and going to the Plan B market, all those Plan B starters a year ago, January 26th here in the Super Bowl, all the trades he's made. Beautiful job of keeping them 
The Redskins up on the fly. At the 24-yard line, Salisbury sends it to Allen. And Terry gets taken down at the 31, gain of seven. The Vikings have all of their timeouts left. The clock is down to 140. And again, this is where Sean Salisbury does not have that world of experience to fall back upon. On second and three, throwing off his back foot and throwing it away, it'll be third down and three as he winds up in the grasp of Jumpy Gethers and Fred Stokes. But a good uh, decision there on the part of Salisbury. No receiver, nothing doing out to Terry Allen, nothing doing downfield as the Redskins were in a prevent defense. He just threw it out of bounds. Didn't try to force it in. A little awkward back there, but he is. He's six foot five, but a good athlete, former high school basketball and baseball star. Notice how he never sets himself, though, Frank. He wasn't pressured until late, and yet he never took a firm stance in the pocket. That's uh, something a quarterback that's unsure of himself is prone to do. Third and a short three. Pump fake going deep, way too deep, and good coverage on the play as well. And Fred Stokes knocks Salisbury to the turret. So insult to injury, and it's fourth down and three. Well, when you pump fake, you're going to draw the secondary, but the amount of time that you have to stand in the pocket and you see the sandwich, Stokes on one side, Charles Mann coming in from the other, it's almost a certainty that the quarterback is going to take a good hit when you try to run that pattern. Yeah, but Dan, you got to question the call, too, trying to take that ball deep against the prevent defense. Forget it. Three skins were back there. And now the Redskins are going to get it back with a lot of time. Harry Newsom. I agree. Mitchell takes it at the 21-yard line. And it's a nine-yard run back up to the 30-yard line. Following a 47-yard punt, Jake Reed makes the tackle. Skins have it with 112 remaining in the first half and all of their timeouts at their disposal. Charles Mann. Redskin defense. They gave up. They gave up that long drive on the opening drive of the game. And there it is, the yards per quarter. The Vikings uh, limited to 56 and the Redskins with 106. Rippon's numbers aren't scintillating, but uh, his team is up by 10. And Lachey is in the game. That left tackle as the Skins come up to the 30-yard line. And here is where in the past the Redskins have shined. This is Art Monk working out of the backfield. Up to the 37-yard line. Tackled by Parker. Well, somebody's down for the Redskins. And that is uh, Ernest Biner. Ernest Biner. Ooh. And he's trailing that left arm now. Uh, Ridd's in a problem yeah. with a back problem last week that he played through, apparently. That, uh, if you've ever had a back that's oh. been bothering you, getting out of the of your favorite easy chair is a chore. Imagine trying to play a National Football League game. Well, that's since it happened in the last two minutes. Uh, is a charged timeout. The Skins were going to conserve their timeout, but they uh, are forced to use one. They have two remaining. Again, we saw Monk working out of the backfield. A lot of people might recall when he was originally drafted back in 1980, he had played a lot of uh, running back for Syracuse as well as wide receiver. That graphic you're looking at certainly indicative of superior line play. Last five postseason games, nary a sack. Lachey back on the sidelines talking to Bubba Tyre, the Redskin trainer. Big Joe Jacoby back in and left back. Second and three at the 37 yard line with Middleton in motion. Here's Brian Mitchell. And Brian Mitchell takes it up to the 43 yard line. That is a first down. We have 53 seconds remaining in the first half. Clock continues to tick down. Skins have two timeouts remaining. And of course, if you have Low Miller on the sidelines, you know you can reach it from at least 55. There's a good chance to make it from anywhere 52 or 53. On first and 10 from the 43 yard line, they set up a screen. This is Mitchell. Couldn't get the blocking necessary. Only a three yard gain. Henry Thomas makes the tackle. Skins take a timeout. 31 ticks left. There's Low Miller. On the sideline. Had a 52 yarder here in the Redskins 15 13 win in October. Wilbur Marshall will be going to the Pro Bowl. 
for the first time as a as a Washington Redskin. He made a couple of trips when he was a member of that tremendous linebacking trio in Chicago. Mike Singletary in the middle, Otis Wilson on the other side, and he turned in a year this year, guys. I, I know you agree with me, reminiscent of what Seth Joyner did last year with the Eagles. I. It's hard to imagine a linebacker having a better all-around year than Wilbur Marshall had this year for for Washington. In a similar way, well, he did it all. Yep, as Joyner did, and is doing for Philadelphia. They don't get all the praise that the outside stand-up defensive end linebackers get in pressuring the quarterback and sacking the quarterback, but they just quietly do it all. Meanwhile, there is the key man in this half, Brian Mitchell, scoring a touchdown, executing the fake punt, the great punt return. And he's going to be a key man now with Viner back on the bench. And Ricky Irvin's not even in uniform. Second and seven. A little shovel to Mitchell. And nothing happens there as the Vikings smell that one out. Merriweather makes the tackle. Washington down to its final timeout. And what do they want to do? Well, they're going to let the clock run and yeah. uh, let Mark Rippon try, I assume, a long pass. On third down, they throw it underneath to Brian Mitchell. That's and curious. he takes it to the 41. It's a very curious use yeah. of the clock. Two seconds. Now yeah. they take a timeout. Well, but you would, have, you would have thought that they would have taken the timeout before with the 20 some odd seconds and run a play or two to try to get Low Miller in shape and then I, go out of bounds. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Al. They're they wasted very, a lot of time. They're in very viable field goal position here. Unusual to see the Redskins make mm -hmm. curious use of the clock. That's yes. Very unlike a Joe Gibbs team. Mm -hmm. uh, clock management, one of his uh, one of his strengths, to be sure. One of his many strengths. Like Gary head. Clark is really upset over on the Redskins sideline. Gibbs has had to go over and talk to him, and Clark threw his helmet. See, there, there's Low Miller. Well, calling for uh, that's time a, out at an earlier juncture. That's Look a live this. shot right there of Clark and Gibbs. That's going on right now. A very volatile Gary Clark, one of the fine competitors in the league, and. You can see Gibbs is maintaining a, a, a calm head here. You know, the only thing you could speculate is that Gary Clark has been open. He felt he should be getting the ball thrown to him. And he is a competitive, great football player, and he is just upset about it. The Vikings will now take a timeout with uh, two seconds remaining. And barring a penalty, this will be the final play and a 58-yard field goal attempt upcoming for Chip Lomiller. It's impossible for us to crawl inside Gary Clark's head and know exactly what he's thinking but I'm inclined to agree with you that it's a it's a that's a frustration about not getting the ball when he thinks he ought to get the well, ball and every of course, receiver all has, great quarterbacks think that every way. receiver has felt that receivers rather you're right and I felt it myself and uh, many times you want to go back and yank their helmet off and hit him over the head with it we ought to give Gary Clark Mark Clayton's phone number they could uh, <laughs> chat about the do it by committee <laughs> In the history of the National Football League, the longest postseason field goal, 58 yards, in a wild card game two years ago, Miami, Kansas City, Pete Stoyanovich kicked it. This one will be spotted by Rutledge just inside the 49, so it's a 58-yard attempt, and it is low and no good. That kick would have avoided radar. That was so low that it, uh, it never had a chance. The stealth. Yeah. So that is the end of the half as the Redskins <laughs> trail early but then scored 17 straight to lead by 10. And back we come with halftime activities after this message from the NFL and a word from our ABC. Now I have the privilege to present for induction into the Hall of Fame, John Riggins. This is the Pro Football Hall of Fame celebrating 100 years of professional football. The Pro Football Hall of Fame is a place where dreams come true. And these halls are the men and the records. But behind every number, there is a story and a boy's dream that came true. As a farm boy in Kansas, I had those dreams. And in my dreams, I'd fly above the clouds. I wanted to be a cowboy, the marshal that got the bad guys. I was a pirate, and I sailed the seven seas. But in my greatest dreams, I ran for a touchdown, and I won the Super Bowl for my team. You can share in those dreams. They're all here waiting for you at the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. Don't miss it. This message furnished by the National Football League. And Mitchell. 
takes the kick from Quad Reves, and he throws it to the near side. And this is Danny Copeland, and Copeland can get back only to the 18-yard line. Well, that's a play that he's worked on with Desmond Howard. Successfully. And, and it worked for a touchdown earlier this season. Howard, by the way, is on injured reserve. He was hurt last week. <laughs> Wayne, <laughs> Quite Wayne. a way for the Redskins to begin this second Wayne half. Wayne Sevier wore out a couple pencils this week. This has he? got to be a lateral. <laughs> and so you saw Mitchell set up on the yard marker so he could determine whether it would be a lateral, and it was. But it was good coverage again. It's tough to do against a quick team like the Vikings. They got a lot of speed out there, and they recovered very quickly. They honored their responsibilities and stayed on. There and they also first. knew that the Redskins had it. Ernest Biner begins the second half. As the tailback, he gets the ball. He gets tackled by Dolman as he reaches the 21-yard line. And we'll take a look at the numbers through the first half of play. And those two Minnesota turnovers have both turned out to be quite costly. You see the Vikings have uh, given up 10 points because of those turnovers. Uh, the lone Redskin turnover didn't cost them anything because Minnesota turned it right back over to them. Time of possession favors Washington, and the Vikings right now need something to get them jump started. Jacoby is in at left tackle. Lachey does not start this half. Miner goes nowhere. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Audrey McMillan, who will be going to the Pro Bowl, comes up to make the tip. But could give them a good start, Dan, of course, would be to shut the Redskins down on this very first series. Ooh, there's Jack Del Rio, who's down on the field. A lot of people think that he might be the Viking most valuable player this year. The impact he's had on the defense coming up here from Dallas, the way he has played the run, and he's got a leg problem of some type. That will probably bring out a former Redskin when they stay in the 4-3, Minuski, as the middle linebacker. Looks like his left leg. There's Del Rio right in the middle of the screen. He makes the hit. He comes in. And it looked like he got clipped on that left ankle. They replaced Del Rio for the moment with two linebackers in this alignment with Ed McDaniel. Yeah, they're in their nickel now. A rookie out of Clemson. They'll be Minuski to 4-3. They're in nickel now. Third down and seven from the 21-yard line. And Rippin going deep for Clark, and he almost makes a spectacular catch, but can't hold on at the 40-yard line. There is the story of the Redskin passing game in 1992. So near to so many big plays, and yet there's a, an illustration, Frank, where Gary Clark is open, and he's just a shade overthrown by Mark Rippin. And we saw it a little earlier, an overthrow just off the fingertips. And Gary Clark almost made a spectacular catch. He had it. The field knocked it out. Mm -hmm. It would have been a highlight film catch. And you just, a quarterback can't put his receiver in that position every time. Big series for the Vikings. They shut the offense down to the Redskins. They'll get the ball close to midfield. Got a good burn to kick. Anthony Parker to receive it. Very low line drive kick. And he angles out of bounds near the... 40 yard line they'll march it off spotted at the 38 yard line and that's where the Minnesota Vikings will take their first second half possession they continue to work on Jack Del Rio meanwhile in San Diego there, huh? where it's raining the Kansas City Chiefs against the San Diego Chargers the Chargers in the playoffs for the first time in a decade winning the AFC West Bobby Ross in his rookie season winning 11 of his last 12. Hard to figure who that brain will help. At the 38-yard line, here are the Vikings starting with Roger Craig. The running back, he's across the 50, and he's all the way down to the Richkin 42-yard line. Boy, he made Brad Edwards look bad, didn't he? Oh, he can do it. Oh. Great cutback runner, high-stepping. Characteristic stride of Roger Craig. And he covers up the football. They'll try to strip it right at the end. Now watch this cutback. And he kicks those knees up. Edwards gets a hand on him. That's all. Covering up the football. And Mayhew tries to pull it out. 20-yard gain. His longest run during the regular season was 21. Here he goes again for no gain. Boy, the playoffs just 
find Roger Craig, don't they? <laughs> Ten years in the league, eight with San Francisco, goes to postseason every year. Goes to the Raiders last year, they go to postseason. This year, well, what else is new? Kind of a nice talisman. Where will he be next year, huh? <laughs> well conditioned yeah. after. He'll be around here for a while. I think he'd like to be here. Mm -hmm. In his tenth year as a running back, that's a lot of years, but he is stays in great condition. Terry Allen comes into the game on second and 11 from the 43-yard line, early third quarter. Washington ahead, 17 to seven. Salisbury was good at protection and nearly had that one picked off by Martin Mayhew. And the Boo Birds are on Sean Salisbury. Martin Mayhew not expecting to be the recipient of so many balls coming his oh. direction has another one bounce off of him. Remember he had a carom job earlier that came to him and that <laughs> is no carom job. That is between the three and the five and that's just a major mistake by Mayhew to not intercept that thing. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He's just been activated back early from a broken forearm but still third down and 11 pressure from man he steps up and then goes down at his own 49 in the grasp of Fred Stokes. Man forced the issue and then Stokes finished him off. And the Vikings are forced to kick. And Sean does not. Hey, what a job I this mean, man's just got doing. that star-struck look to him. I know you're going to Richie Pettibone oh. here. Yeah, the first oh, drive, times. Minnesota looked like they were going to blow him right out. And they haven't done anything since. They've just shut down everything. Here comes Man. Getting around Irwin, forcing Sean to step up. Stokes has got the penetration on his man. Classic. Yeah. And you have to understand, that's not Salisbury's fault. From the minute he's flushed by man, he's just fighting for survival. Newsom's kick is a 42-yarder. Fair caught by Mitchell at the 8-yard line. 11-31 left in the third in the playoffs. 10-point Washington lead. I guess all is well with the world when bowling is back on ABC. We've ah. had it for so many years. Chris Schenkel and the gang on hand for the AC Delco Classic next Saturday. Also, you'll see the Durasoft Colors World Challenge of Champions. And then on Sunday, the first tour event of the golf season, you've got the regular stars and the senior tour guys having at it in the Infinity Tournament of Champions next Sunday. Also, log on the fire and watch some guys playing golf. That's a great way to spend a winter weekend. Washington from the eight yard line. Ernest Biner takes it to the 10. That's a pickup of two. It'll be second down and eight with 11.20 remaining in the third quarter. 17 to seven. Washington and Jim Lachey is back in. Yeah, he's suffering from some bad ribs and uh, had them attended to uh, at halftime. And uh, he's able to continue to play. And there's a good look at Jack Del Rio, who we saw limp off with the bad ankle. He had it retaped, and now he's back out for. The Vikings, and as you can tell, this is a playoff game. Nothing to hold back for. Second and eight from the 10. Griffin guns it up to the 22-yard line, and it's caught for a first down as Art Monk, who uh, had, was catching a lot of passes in the first half of the season, but had seen his productivity really fall off in the second half, is there for the first down. Look at the protection, though, that Rippon gets. Mark Rippon is not challenged at all in the pocket, able to step up into the middle and deliver that that pass. Frank that Lee had a hand in there, and he was Monk was dragging him in, but he captured the hand and the ball at the 22-yard line. First and ten after Monk's third catch of the game. A lot of time for Rippon and a perfect throw to a wide-open Ron Middleton, who's down by contact. Up at the 41-yard line, another Redskin first down. Two good throws now in a row for Mark Rippon. He gets the one out to Art Monk, who helps him with a good catch. And that time, a good read by Middleton, who got himself into the zone. He pulled up, and Rippon read right with him the zone. He comes off one receiver, looks back. Middleton is set up in there, and Rippon fires it in. Such a perfect illustration, though, of the Redskin passing philosophy. Only a two-receiver pattern downfield Everyone else stays in to protect the quarterback. It's a different philosophy from a lot of teams where they put the quarterback at risk by sending five people into the pattern. 
And from the 40-yard line, here comes Dolman, and he is sacked at the 30. That's the end of the play. The ball is loose. The play is over at the 30-yard line. Yeah, Dolman just ripped the ball out of there after the play was over, but nobody touched Dolman. The Vikings like to do this once in a while. They do a little deal up front. You make a mistake on it, and Dolman with that unbelievable speed is all over your quarterback before he can set up. See him come inside, beating Lachey to the inside. Lachey just overcommits he to the did. outside. He he took too big of a step with that left foot to the outside, and he guessed, and he guessed wrong. He guessed Dolman was going upfield. Dolman knife to the inside, and Lachey was dead wrong. Second and 20. And Rippin somehow is able to gun it in oh. to Gary Clark. Perfect. Up at the 42-yard line for a gain of 11. It'll be third down and nine. Anthony Parker, who is uh, in there for the injured oh, Audrey McMillan, makes the tackle. McMillan was shaken up on the earlier catch by Middleton. What a great effort by both Rippon and Clark. Was it a sales job? I don't job? know. He, 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 he made it look awfully pretty. I think they tend to give Gary Clark the benefit of the doubt because he's done it so many times. Does he hold on, control it? Mm. Well, no, he right. doesn't. But, I mean, <laughs> this is Gary Clark. He's going to get the call, and he gets it. Third down and nine at the 42-yard line. He drops it off to Clark, and Gary tried to make an inside move on Lee and slips down at the 47, <laughs> and that'll create a punt. And I think all Viking fans say there's justice. He didn't catch the last one, so it's fitting that he falls down on third down yeah, because that was the, not a catch. The competitive nature of Gary Clark, too. I mean, let's take a look again. This is going back to the play just before. He, he has to control the ball. He obviously didn't, and certainly obvious in slow motion. A little difficult at top speed, but you get the, the nature of Gary Clark. He is a competitor. He wants to play the football game. He wants to be in on every play, and I'm sure that was the result of what we saw as he left the field at halftime, jawing, and everybody would listen. Good burn to kick. Line of scrimmage is the 48. And it's a very short kick. The square foot up at the 23 by Parker. 29-yard boot. 7.36 remaining in the third. Still 17-7, Richmond. That's a hurting bunch of guys playing on hard over there and a lot of guts. First down, Minnesota from the 24-yard line as Allen moves out to the 27-yard line. That's a pickup of three. Second and seven, Shane Collins in on the tackle. And the Vikings are going to need some productivity from Salisbury. Down by 10. Sean is one of his last seven. And in the game, five of 14 to 88 yards and two picks. Last week, 20 of 33 and 290 yards against Green Bay. What a difference. Second and seven. And that's incomplete. Intended for Carter, who's covered by Mayhew. The crowd booing, thinking that Mayhew got there early. It looked like a pretty well-timed play by the Redskin cornerback, who's having to do a lot today. Fill in for Daryl Green uh, on the heels of returning from a broken forearm of his own. I think uh, he'll offer no apology. Third and seven from the 27-yard line. Everybody's covered, and so is Salisbury at the 21 by Fred Stokes, who gets his second sack. Get it right on the head, Al. That's a, that's a coverage sack. Salisbury had plenty of time. His line gave him plenty of time to get the ball downfield, but good coverage by the Redskins secondary. Look, looking for somewhere to go. Steps up. Still nobody. i got to get out of here. And Jumpy Gathers was the man who created the, the largest amount of penetration up the middle. And when Salisbury went to step up, it was Gathers on the ground that caused him to flush out. Newsom's kick. It's a 52-yard kick that bounces out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Washington with the ball again and the lead 17 to 7. For the Vikings is the man in the hat and the jacket and that's Rich Gannon who was their starter through much of the season now at Salisbury Dennis Green told us yesterday it's Sean all the way today we'll see 
First down at the 29-yard line for Washington. And Brian Mitchell starts with a five-yard gain to the 34. And Dennis said his philosophy is that, hey, I, I made the decision that this is my number one guy. So I, I feel that he's the best man for this particular game. Number two, he takes all the reps during practice. So he's the most qualified to play. And he just doesn't believe in pulling and substitutions. And there's a, a good example. Gannon has never been a substitute in his career. But this is a playoff game. This is a playoff game. If you don't win this, there's nothing left. So the temptation has to be there for Dennis Green. Second and five, and Mitchell fights his way up to the 40-yard line. Big day for Brian Mitchell. Mike Merriweather makes the tackle. Again, if you don't follow the Redskins that closely, Ernest Biner's their key guy. Ricky Irvins is their number two guy, but Irvins is hurt today. So Brian Mitchell's had to fill a big role today, and he has filled it brilliantly as you look at Ricky Irvins. He just battled for another first down. Irvins on the sideline with a bad ankle, and Biner, we already told you about him with the bad back and perhaps something else earlier in the game. Told you McMillan came out, the uh, cornerback, the right corner for Minnesota, bicep injury. He's questionable as to his return, and Parker spills him. And Parker locked up right now one-on-one -on -one with Monk as Mitchell somehow finds room up to the 45-yard line, gain of five. Carlos Jenkins makes the tackle, and we have less than five minutes to play in the third quarter. Vikings, you get the feeling they need a big play at this point. They need a turnover, a fumble, somebody to knock the ball out of there, somebody to scoop it up, do something big for them. The Redskins are taking total control of this game. They, right now, are owning the line of scrimmage. And Tony Dungy knows that, the defensive coordinator of Minnesota, very well. They need a big play. Second and five from the 45-yard line. And there is Mitchell getting to midfield, and if the nose of the ball is on the 50-yard line, he's got a first down, and he does. You mentioned the line of scrimmage, Frank, and that's what we're seeing. Of course, how many times have we seen it over the career of Joe Gibbs and this Redskin offensive line? The longer the game goes on, their physical prowess begins to assert itself. And th th this last play is a classic look at it. Look at the surge on the left side, Brian Mitchell, not a power back is not contested until he's four yards downfield. First and ten at the 50. 17 7 Washington. Mitchell stopped at his own 48 by Jack Del Rio. I think maybe the Redskins had one too many motions that time. What they have two motions, three shifts, but you can see they had the Vikings a little bit confused. Or problem is they confused themselves yeah, I think a little so. bit. I think so. Jack Del Rio, what a Plan B player he has been. A Dallas, originally drafted as an All-American out of USC to New Orleans, went to Kansas City, Dallas, put him on Plan B, probably because they thought he'd stay there. Came up here, liked it, moved up here, and he is been one of the key reasons this Vikings defense has gone from 14th to 8th. Second and 12. Here is Monk. And Monk gets tackled by Parker, who's in there subbing for McMillan, and that's a four-yard loss. When a wide receiver is playing running back, which Monk had to do there, their instincts aren't as good as a regular running back. And Art should have cut back to the inside, utilizing his blocker. Instead, he jumps outside to the sideline and gets tackled. He should have jabbed inside of Ray Brown there. Instead, he went outside, and Anthony Parker nails him for an even bigger loss. Third down and 16 at the 44. 2-10 left in the third. Redskins up by 10. Goldman can't sack Rippin, who then finds Clark at the 26 for a big first down. On third and 16, Dolman just couldn't get Rippin down, and then Mark stepping up and finding the open man. And Gary Clark knew he was going to take his shot, and he got one, but Mark Rippin, he sometimes, like I said, he can break your heart, and then he can absolutely make your heart beat. 
What's out of sheer joy. This is a great play. Get him away from Dolman, and he finds Clark and fires it in there. What's unusual about that is that the Redskins, I mean, the Vikings always have such good pressure in the middle. Their two tackles are always in the quarterback's face. And that's really unusual. Dolman forces him up in the middle, and Rippon's able to get it away. Gain of 29, first down at the 27-yard line. Here's Ernest Finer, tackled by Del Rio after a gain of three to the 24. And the Redskins now uh, not only moving the ball downfield, but Rippon using as much of the clock, and we have less than a minute to go in the third quarter. It's not the point of the ball game where it's crucial. I mean, like, where you don't have any chances left. But the Vikings trailing by 10 points with Washington outside of scoring territory with a third and 16 to give up that play is a real backbreaker. A real backbreaker. Second and seven at the 24. Picked off at the 19-yard line by Henry Thomas. Well, he nearly knocked Thomas down with it. Well, they Again, come with Rippen, the blitz. Yeah, they Rippen come with the blitz. Right, it forced Rippin out of the pocket, but he's looking right downfield at Henry Th Thomas, and he just drilled him. That could have stuck in the mask. How does he think he's ever going to get that through there? <laughs> Thomas is there. Del Rio is there. And maybe he accomplished what he wanted to do. Hit him so hard he couldn't hold on to that. Unless it, he accomplished his mission, if his mission was to break a couple of Henry Thomas's fingers. <laughs> if you throw it into a defender's hands, it might as well be a defensive tackle. Third down and seven. Rippin for Clark, who's open. Touchdown. Oh, and a great read with Rippin and Clark. Picked up the single coverage on the blitz. The Vikings ordinarily sitting in that zone. Rippin read it, Clark read it. And, and let's see him on the sidelines. Eric Everett didn't Watch read it. this. There it is. He was John all over him as he left the field at halftime. And what a combination. <laughs> wide open. Back of the end zone. Low Miller for the point after. So they had a third and 16 to the Redskins. They converted that. Rippon finds Clark in the end zone, and we've got 17 seconds left in the third, and the Redskins try to win a trip to Candlestick. Some prize. Pins have scored 24 straight points to lead 24-7. The kick is taken at the three-yard line by Joe Johnson. And Johnson runs it out to the 34-yard line. Tackled by James Jenkins. Gary Clark getting free in the back of the end zone to cap off a 71-yard drive. Six seconds now left in the third. Off the bat, but then the second quarter dominated by the Redskins and the third quarter Totally dominated by the Redskins. And you look at the touchdown pass to Gary Clark, but strange as this sounds, the one to Clark before that on the third and 16 was even bigger. First and 10, Minnesota at the 33. Waning seconds of the third quarter. And Salisbury hits Anthony Carter. Nice catch. Takes it to the Washington 42-yard line on what will be the final play of the third quarter. And so the Vikings begin the fourth quarter in Redskin territory. 24-7 Washington, and back we come to Minneapolis after this message from our ABC stations. Clearly, Jens, a very critical drive here from Minnesota down by 17. If we talk so much about the Washington offense, uh, what about this defense? They've done a tremendous job shutting Minnesota down. That was the first catch for Anthony Carter. Steve Jordan, the tight end, has no catches. Salisbury on first down from the 42. Nearly has that one picked off. Intended for Anthony Carter. A.J. Johnson with the coverage. And that catch by Anthony Carter at the end of the 
third quarter was his first and catch of the day. And they shut out Steve Jordan, their Pro Bowl tight end. Uh, it's Richie said he was going to roll the dice, and he's done that. He's blitzed at the right time. He, he's absolutely called a perfect game. But they are fast approaching that point where you're going to have to score virtually every time you have a possession. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you're going to have to keep Washington from ringing the bell anymore. So it, here in the fourth quarter, the Minnesota offense and defense better come together and have the quarter of their lives. Second and ten, and Salisbury goes down again. Stokes was a part of that. And Fred Stokes, I don't know if they'll give him the whole sack or a half of that one, but if they give him the whole thing, that's three. Well, the Redskins' key to victory has always been the same. Forget all the multiple shifts, the formations, the blitzes. Richie Pettibone on defense, Joe Gibbs in running the offense. They win by dominating the line of scrimmage. And that is what the Redskins have done to the Vikings through three quarters of play. A good illustration of it there. The Redskin defensive line just collapses the Viking offensive line. It has always been the way. Forget the cuteness. They win by physical domination up front. Third and 21. Stokes puts the pressure on this time, and Stokes is going to get another sack at the 35-yard line. And we're going to check with scoring to see if they gave him the full sack the last time. If that's number four for the day, he only had three and a half during the regular season. You can see Sean Salisbury motioning to the official that he wanted a face mask call. Still complaining bitterly about it. There's Fred Stokes. The left hand clearly has he's, the face mask. He's got a point. Of Salisbury, he has an excellent point. He starts that off. And the, the referee was on the far side and obviously didn't see it. But uh, Salisbury has got a case that should have been called. Harry Newsom forced to kick. And it's fair caught by Mitchell at the 23-yard line. A TD on their first drive, but after that, boy, is that ugly? Talk Two. about not being indicative of what was to follow. Mm, that opening drive was it. From the 24-yard line, here's Ernest Biner. And Biner takes it up to the 31-yard line. I mean, Ernest Biner he, he is a guy who is, uh, is so smart. Through the years, he's played extremely well in postseason. On that particular play, he's skirting the sideline. And, and not that the clock is that huge a factor right now, but why not stay in bounds? Unfortunately, it's that stupid fumble in the AFC Championship game four years ago that people remember about a man who, and we'll bring it up as we go through the fourth quarter, has been terrific in postseason play. Well, they missed by, what, two yards for a, a third consecutive 1,000-yard season. Uh, had any other Redskins done that? I don't believe so. And yeah. he's not a fumbler. And, like, he's, uh, we're looking at Vincey Glenn, who's doubled over there on the Viking sideline after that last run by Biner. But let's be serious now. You're talking about a guy who has been excellent every year he's been in the NFL and like he's the only running back in the NFL that's ever fumbled mm -hmm. at a critical time forget that you carry it you're gonna lose it second and three at the 31 and here's Ernest again and Dolman stops him after a gain of one with Merriweather finishing him off it'll be third down and two good play by Chris Dolman fights off the block of the tight end and, and gets upfield and makes the hit it's just every first down now by the Redskins is just hammering away at the Vikings and just sapping them a little bit more. They have no mistakes left. And as it suddenly makes it a first down. So frequently, uh, the Vikings moving a little quickly on the snap. And they just uh, whistled Noga for a personal foul at the end of that last play, and that is a first down for Washington up at the 36-yard line. A mistake they don't have to give. 13 15 to play. Middleton in motion. Here's Brian Mitchell. Up to the 41 yard line. That's a gain of five. Mike Merriweather makes the tackle. The Redskins running game is just a series of explosions. I mean, it is just. You hear one, and then you hear another one, and then it's the lead block comes whamming in there, and the tight end's blocking down. This is just a methodical wear-you-out 
slam it right at you. Good block by Lachey coming off to the inside on Del Rio. But it is a physical running attack. And here in the fourth quarter is when the other guy starts to get just a little hesitant to stick his head on the ball carrier. Why not, why not let somebody else do it? They're already on the smallest side, too, then. Second and five. Mitchell again, and Brian Mitchell seeking that first down, and I believe he has it you see uh, the, to, to the 47. You see how the missed tackles are starting to uh, become a little more frequent? The first yeah. guy from Minnesota getting to the ball carrier isn't bringing the red skin down. They didn't quite give him the no. spot that I thought they would. And, uh, this is going to be a little closer than we originally earlier. anticipated. Well, let's call down there, Al. Yes, sir. Tell them where you want it. Yes, the sir. secret of this defense for the Vikings has been penetration. They're not that big. They've got to be quick, and Dan, you pointed out a while ago, late in the game, sometimes that quickness starts to go, and that's when hog power really takes over. Mm. Hog power. Hog power was good for a first down yep. there. Al, you were right. Yep. Vindicated. Just a little Make sure those contacts are still I operative. I think George Seifert is headed towards the video room to pull out some some of the skins tapes. Jim Hannafin, the offensive line coach there, former head coach of the St. Louis Cardinals, trying to tell Brian Mitchell what to do so he can take credit for it afterwards. <laughs> 190 yeah. combined that yards <laughs> for Brian Mitchell. First down up at the 40. Six yard line. Here's Ernest Biner taking it to the Minnesota 45 yard line. So chewing up yardage and chewing up the clock. Down to 11 and a half to play. 24 to 7, Washington. Once again over Jim Lachey and the big man slow getting up once again. But they set out to today to focus and go right at big strength of the Minnesota defense. Chris Dolman. He's a great pass rusher. They just power him with their tight end. Coming over there, Terry Orr right behind Lachey. And I mean, look a couple of explosions look later. What, look what yards. they throw at you. 300-pound guard, 300-pound tackle, 270-pound tight end, a 250-pound tight end. I mean, it is just merciless the way they come at you. And second oh. two as they take the play clock down to two, and Ernest Biner picks up the first down. Just perfect execution. Oh. Second and two, take the play clock down to two. Keep the uh, sticks moving and keep the clock going. That might have been our best look yet at the right side of the offensive line. They just blew these guys out of here. Whoa. I mean, watch this look at the Vikings go backwards. Oh, oh. that was Jacoby's man. Oh. Caught in midair. Joe Jacoby in the ball game. I nope. mean, it's. That's Noga, 6 1 and oh. about 260. Yeah, Joe Jacoby in at right guard, spelling Mark Schlereth, who's nicked himself. First and 10 at the 42. Again, the play clock is down to three. At the snap, Brian Mitchell finds some room. And Mitchell takes it to the 37-yard line. An unlikely hero, Brian Mitchell, a guy getting a chance to see a lot more action today because of the fact that Biner's been dinged and Irvin's is out. And that's 102 yards on the ground, including that fake punt for Brian Mitchell, the one-time college quarterback. An unlikely hero at the running back position coming into this game. I have to say that his effort has taken Minnesota by surprise. Yeah, a very reluctant one. Yeah. Remember Joe Gibbs told us he really hoped he didn't have to go to this. Didn't have a choice. And yeah, Mitchell has really come through. Second and five. And again, Rippin doing a beautiful job of the play clock. The snap this time is at two. Here's Mitchell. A, totally play, a play that was anything but pretty, but it nets uh, another first down. A totally busted close. play. Looks like this spot is going to be close again, Al. They're Very close, yeah. Spotting him maybe a little shy of it. This you will know, be another measurement. But you know, Mitchell didn't get all the, that many reps last week working on the offense, and you're, you have to expect something like that every now and then. It's remarkable that they have been able to run the offense as smoothly as they have. you got three tight ends in the lineup for the Redskins, and this is where they slam it at you. Or Middleton, Jenkins, all in the game at the same time. I mean, it's a, it is a serious collection of beef coming at you. They're about an inch shy of a first down. Combined yards in a postseason game in the history of the Redskins. Up, oh, Ricky Sanders. You go back to the Super Bowl in San Diego against Denver. He had that tremendous day. 
and Timmy Smith in that same game, the uh, pretty much a one-game wonder was Timmy Smith. But what a game. If you're going to be a one-game wonder, it might as well be in the Super Bowl. And factor in Doug Williams, who quarterbacked the Redskins that game, and what a 35-point second quarter. You're right, it was the shining moment for a lot of people. Us not included. <laughs> <laughs> it was our year to have it. <laughs> well, enjoyed the week shit. down there, though. <laughs> the size of Griffin helps. They often go with the quarterback's knee. The big mark at 6'4", about 230 pounds. Third and the inches or even a singular inch. And uh, Griffin gets it by plenty. Hard to stop that. What you strong. Hey, what do you say about a team that throws a 235-pound quarterback at you? <laughs> mm. <laughs> 8.45 remaining in the fourth quarter. Washington leading 24-7. Out west we go next. Fred Musburger, Dick Vermeil are there in San Diego. The Kansas City Chiefs earning a spot in the playoffs with their win last week against Denver. Head west to take on the San Diego Chargers who lost their first four and then wrapped up the year winning 11 of the last 12. Kobe is back in the game at the 30-yard uh, line. It's first down and 10. Ernest Biner. This nine-yard game. This is surgery without an anesthetic. And this for a very hushed and moaning crowd now. Uh, this is a brutal display of football by the Washington Redskins. You talk about dotting the I, crossing the T, and putting the exclamation point at the end of how you take care of the football. This drive right here is symbolic of a team that is the world champion until proven otherwise. And according to Joe Gibbs, we're looking at a miracle. And Jim Hannafin, our offensive line coach, uh, believe me, he's a happy guy. This is his kind of football, isn't it? Well, yeah. when you, you're a three-and-a-half-point dog, it's not quite a miracle, but it's a miracle oh. they got in the playoffs after they lost to the Raiders last Saturday. It's amazing. I guess it's uh, how nice a guy Joe Gibbs is that so many people could feel so sorry for the world <laughs> champions. Yep. I mean, uh, I mean, people have tears running down their cheeks feeling sorry for the Redskins. I think today might erase that. Well, he hands out a lot of Kleenex, too. Current Redskin drive began at their own 24, so they've uh, chewed up 55 yards and taken six and a half minutes off the clock. That last time out, a Washington timeout. Total yards in the uh, game. Washington, great balance today. And Minnesota has been stymied since their opening drive. It is second down and one. And this is Finer picking up a first down, and that'll take another 45 seconds off the clock by the time they run the next play. It is such... A wonderful feeling to be in that offensive huddle, Frank. You've been there before when when you have another team on the run, when you have them on the heels, when you're just clicking off first down after first down. It's a great feeling. And particularly in a playoff situation, you know you're going to continue on. You weren't expecting to. There's a wonderful camaraderie that comes back together again. Not that the Redskins have not had it. They've stuck together real well this year. But it's starting to, it'll start to motor form a little even stronger. Well, the Redskins are sending the Vikings some thank you note. They're in the playoffs because of Minnesota, right. and they've just knocked Minnesota right out of them. Yeah, what a fine job Dennis Green did here in his first year turning this team around. We talked about going from 14th defense to 8th overall and offense. They also made a tremendous turnaround. Sent a message. He wants no problems off the field. He wants his players to perform on the field at the highest level. Second and nine at the 17-yard line. They clock down to five. And Mitchell gets tackled by Del Rio at the 15-yard line. Well, if this keeps up now, the Redskins head to San Francisco, and that means that the uh, winner of the Philadelphia New Orleans game tomorrow would go to Dallas. They will have an opportunity for a great postgame show. Check in on Kansas City and San Diego. And Post, between, and pre. And pre. Put them all together and it spells Redskins football. This game just fast. Two and a half hours old right now. 
only five minutes left. And Biner on third and seven taking it to the 10. It's fourth down and two on what was the 13th play of this drive, which has consumed uh, almost the entire fourth quarter. The drive starting with less than a minute having expired in the fourth. We're down to 4.52 and counting, and Low Miller comes in to try to tack on three. This will be about a 28-yard field goal attempt. Chip actually practices up here during the offseason. Goes over to the Vikings field, their indoor field sometimes, their outdoor field. Makes his home here, former University of Minnesota star. Those privileges uh, might be rescinded. 27-yard field goal attempt. Rutledge puts oh. it down, and the Vikings finally get a break. Somehow, some way, Lomeler misses an easy one. But not a bad time to do it with a 17-point lead and 4.25 to go. and they went to the wild card setup as we know it now or a variation thereof only the Raiders in 80 when they beat Philadelphia have won the Super Bowl and the Redskins of course under Jack Kent Cook and Charlie Cashley <laughs> and Jack uh, already enjoying his victory drink are trying to duplicate that feat. crowd taking uh, a little of the frustration out on their quarterback John Salisbury second and ten The great thing about Jack Kent Cook is that apple juice and the snifter, that's the way to celebrate a wild card win. And he's a noted connoisseur of apple juice, and I'm sure that's what that was. Sean Salisbury there almost completed a pass to a Hall of Famer. That was Charlie Taylor on the sidelines uh, for the Redskins, uh, who I think intentionally dropped that ball. There's Charlie Taylor. That's the only now, one he ever dropped. <laughs> that's right. And let's see, did he try to catch this? Oh, no, yeah. Oh, yeah, he didn't. Oh, Charlie, oh, we'll Charlie. Get, we'll get on old number 42. He may have dropped that, Charlie. Was he 42, Dan? Back to, yes, he was. Back to the practice squad. Third and 10, and Salisbury's pass is incomplete as Terry Allen, who's been almost a non-factor today, has it jarred loose by A.J. Johnson. And the Redskins have effectively taken just about every offensive weapon out of the game all day long outside of that first drive. Great timing on the hit by Johnson. Should have held on. Jarring it loose. You've got to hold on to that. Oh, well, do you have a fake punt? You're not going to fool anyone if you if you come with one. In this half, ooh, look at that. Almost five to one for Washington in terms of time of possession. And yes, this is one time that stat is very reflective yeah. of what's happening. Lucy's pick is fielded by Mitchell at the 31, and he'll add to that combined yardage total, taking it back to the 38, a seven-yard run back following a 49-yard boot. Well, you hope that this loss by the Vikings doesn't detract from what has been a most uh, a, a, a most fortunate year for them in the sense that they hired Denny Green. He came in and has established a system, and you get a look at what we have coming up for you after the game, and before we take you out to San Diego for the second half of our doubleheader, Roger Hedrick there who runs the Viking franchise, they have a good thing going here, and this one loss should in no way detract from what a successful year 1992 has been. You've made 8-8 eight eight to 11-5. You've made some major steps. First down of the 38-yard line. And the flag is down. Robert Green, the rookie who made the team in the uh, training camp as a free agent out of William & Mary with the carry. You know, speaking of the Vikings, two uh, gents, as we get the call here from... They were either lined up offside yep. or came across the ball. Thomas and Randall were really crowding the ball out. You know what they're going to start to talk about here pretty soon is the quarterback situation in Minnesota. And... Five yards... Repeat first down. It's not that we're I, adding fuel to the fire here. I mean, it's real simple. What, what does Joe Montana do next year? I mean, let's face it. Joe Montana, his uh, future is in question in terms of with the 49ers. Does he perhaps, with the advent of free agency or some sort of deal being struck, come here? He is under contract with the year. Well, the, but the contract is going to be discussed at the end of the season. Here's Green. 
and he takes it across the 50 to the 46. Clearly, there are a lot of things that have to be done between now and then, but just throwing it out, it makes a lot more sense than some of the other rumors you'll begin to hear. Soon. Looking at it from this point, I think about Joe Montana. I'd want to go to the Washington Redskins. Yeah. Well, I don't think that... I think the Redskins, until further notice, are, are going to be happy with Mark Rippon. They oh, just yeah. signed him to a $3 million deal. But, Al, your point is well made in that the, the Vikings are the type of a system that fits, that Montana would fit into. He's not going to go to an expansion team or a, a cellar dweller and, and get pummeled. He wants to come to a good football team with a good supporting cast that needs a quarterback. And certainly that's the case here in Minnesota. And a coach that he knows very well in Dennis Green. Yep. It's the question mark for any team that I think wants Joe Montana is whether or not he's a free agent or whether or not you're going to have to pay for him. And I don't mean paying for his salary. I mean paying for him in draft choices and other players. Mm -hmm. uh, he will be 37 at the start of next year. And you really have to question how big a price, how much of your future are you willing to mortgage away to get Joe Montana for the quick fix? Well, I'm sure it's Danny Green's thinking. He's got a very young football team. He got rid of some old heads that were still capable of playing. He went for youth. He went for quickness. Uh, do you change that around? Do you lose a number one draft pick or even more to maybe go for that quick fix? I doubt it. I, I doubt think it's to be the final play before the two-minute warning. Green. Well, I'll tell you one thing, gents. The road to free agency is going to go through Minneapolis. It's going to go through the chambers of Judge David Doty, apparently, next week. He is being called for a Tuesday. He's both called parties. both sides together. And again, wants them to settle it on their own rather than forcing him to be the man who, who dictates what the new system will be. Wilbur likes whatever new system's out there. He's a free agent after this season, and that's a victory smile. Vince Lombardi was 9-1 and one in postseason play. Of course, uh, since Gibbs came into the league, and even with Chuck Knoll uh, coaching up until last year, uh, these men have had a chance to coach in a lot more games than a Lombardi would have during his era with the expanded playoff format. But 16-4 and four is remarkable, and that's one of the few things the Redskins have done wrong here in the second half on a botched handoff. And that, the whistles were blowing while the ball was down on the field, so it's okay, a dead play. And it could be Robert Green, who probably had little or very little opportunity to take some reps last week during practice. Defense. He's in there as a running Five back. Yards, still third down. 189 yards for the Skins and nine yards in the second half for the Vikings. Extraordinary. Nine yards. Wow. Domination. What a job for and both those yeah. coaches. Richie Pettibone there. And I seems to be so inventive with every game. It's my choice for a one game. Well, I had to draw up a defensive game plan for a Super Bowl or a game I had to win. I would find Richie Pettibone's phone number and call him. One of the fine, fine minds in the game. Well, Gibbs' staff has sent uh, a lot of coaches to the NFL, and Dan Henning uh, came off the staff. And Dan, of course, now back as an assistant with Detroit and Joe Bugle. Uh, and there's Jim Hannafan, a former head coach himself. And you he's wonder about a, a Richie Pettibone. Rod Dauer, he's yep. been there before. And of course, Dauer, Hannafin, Gibbs, all disciples of Don Coriel. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It was the Don Coriel passing game that, that really gave these guys their introduction to NFL football. But you're right, Richie Pettibone has earned his chance. On fourth and three, here's Green. And uh, he needed three, and he got just about three. I know one thing. If he told me to run a lap, I'd be trotting. <laughs> I want to be there when you run a lap, too. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to measure here. You know, the amazing thing about Pettibone is Time me with a sundial. <laughs> people, people have always talked about Richie as a prospective head coach. Yeah, we asked him last night, when was the last time you were interviewed for a head coaching position? He said New Orleans. Before Jim Moore. Before Moore, so that's 1986. Yeah. Also, he's always caught up in the playoffs for one of the, one of the problems, and coaches want to make early moves. Uh, that's at least one of the problems. You're right. How about his group today? 
limiting the Vikings to 148. Who isn't that something? He had a great player. He had 48 career interceptions as a player. That's yeah. the fewest yards that the Redskins have allowed in a postseason game. And you know, sure. I mentioned as it were, he was the defensive coordinator. Actually, he has the title of assistant, assistant head coach yeah. defense. Larry Pecatello has the title defensive coordinator. Yeah, just they all the sit down together. Yeah, just for the record. It's a great group that Joe Gibbs has collected. And what a tribute to this football team that's won through the adversity that they have this year with all the injuries, everything that's happened. And here they are coming in at 9 and 7, knocking off the Vikings at 11 and 5. It's a great tribute to them. And Joe Gibbs and Dennis Green will meet at midfield. Yes. Joe Gibbs entrusted his son to Dennis Green. His son, Coy, plays at Stanford, recruited by Dennis Green. And the admiration that these two feel for one another is both deep and genuine. Skins continue on. The unlikely hero today is Brian Mitchell. Tremendous day for him. California, here we come. They'll sing the Skins on their flight back to Washington in a week of preparation, and they'll next play next Saturday at Candlestick Park. And as the Redskin offensive line gets healthier and healthier, we see uh, the byproduct of that, their ability to control the line of scrimmage. It was the difference in today's ball game, and that's a warning to the 49ers. The Redskin running game, even with a guy like Brian Mitchell, appears to be back. And getting through this game without Ricky Sanders, their clutch third down player, Ricky Irvin's a short yardage man. They should be able to come back in fairly good health against the 49ers. So who's to say how far they might go? Well, just the beginning of a, a big day for you on ABC. As you know, the Chiefs and the Chargers are warming up out west, and Jack Murphy Stadium will be the site for the kickoff at about the top of the hour. We'll come back. We'll have post-game material from here, mid-game material from New York, pre-game material from San Diego as the Redskins at the Metrodome defeat the Minnesota Vikings 24-7. to 7. 